One of the more arresting talents to emerge in jazz during the 1970s was stand-up bassist Henry Franklin, who put out three albums as a leader during that decade, um, the first two on the Black Jazz label, and the third um, and best tribal dance on Catalyst Records. And from that album, the track Prime Mover. Okay, already we're hearing just like a hurricane of, of like speed and wind and just everything just being blown up in this torrent of piano played by Dwight Dickerson, um, the bass work of Henry Franklin, the percussion of Songship is the and um, yeah, Sonship Theus. And, uh, wow, let's see where this heads. That is Jerry Rush there, trumpet flugelhorn player, and before him um, we were hearing some sax work by Charles Owens. <laughs> Amazingly fluid. Look, hear him just breeze through all those different notes. And... Hear that flexiton in the background. You know the flexiton, that um, that instrument that that that's like a, a piece of of metal that you kind of bend and it has. has... Sunship is really just bombarding this track with drums everywhere. It's just like it's like a tornado. <laughs> is Henry Franklin's album. I have to say on this track, um, the ones who were really just stealing the show are Jerry Rush and um, Sunship Theus. Yeah, they're, they're really dominating the proceedings here. And um, uh, pianist uh, Dwight Dickerson.
they're mostly staying in the same key center, but uh, it you, you don't even notice that there's just so there's so much busy density going on here that uh, who, who who cares about ostinatos? <laughs> is like the, the musical equivalent of abstract expressionism. Sounds like there's like two or three drummers playing at once, but only one drum, one person's credited for all the drums and percussions on this album. It's amazing. It, it, I, I I don't know. I it's hard for me to imagine that he handled it all in one take. There's there's got to be like like more than two hands involved in all this, or they double tracked. <laughs> Yeah, there's all these like toms like just rolling all, all over here. There's all the, this like cymbal spray that's going on all all around here. There's You know, it's it's very rare for me to give an album five stars. I have to know an album for a long, long time in order to, to do something like that. I, I, I oftentimes only do that to some of the key albums that um, formed, that were like formative for me back, say, in the late 80s or early 90s, early to, early to late 90s, like... Um, when I was really delving into the 70s and early 80s. Um, not contemporary stuff from the 90s, I should add. I, I spent the 90s catching up like on the era that directly preceded, um, preceded my adolescence and, and young adulthood. Um, but when I was delving into Henry Franklin like five, six years ago, Getting into like stuff on the Black Jazz label, and his first album I gave, well, to cut a long story short, I ended up giving this album five stars within a few days of of working my way through it. Like by the fifth, by like the fifth play where I was ready to rate the album, I gave it five stars without making it past like the twelve month test or the, and I and I'll tell you how this happened. I gave his first album, The Skipper, four stars based on its strength of like, oh, at least um, 25 minutes of, of solid music um, 
or so I thought. Like like that that was well well into the red zone, into the, like the eight point five or above zone. I ended up giving his second album, The Skipper at Home, four point five stars because it was it was noticeably stronger than its predecessor. Um, had had a roughly a, a four fifths batting average that was well into the red zone for me. I mean, um, like the vast majority of it, I think like 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 all but um, maybe one of the track or. I think um, of the six tracks on there, probably five of them I would consider playlist worthy, like like in a multi-artist mixed list of, of, of albums from 1974. I would include the majority of it. And then Tribal Dance, the third album, on, which appeared on Catalyst Records, was even was noticeably a step up from The Skipper at Home. And so I couldn't just give it the same rating I had given the Skipper at Home. And there's only one more step up from 4.5 on the on the rating system of, of Rate Your Music, and that's five stars. I had to give it five stars. Um, something I rarely... I, I've, I've rarely done over the age of, like, heck. I can only think of, like, two five-star ratings I've given to albums that have just come to my attention, you know, for the first time in, like, heck, this side of 2010. Well, anyway, that was bassist Henry Franklin leading a veritable cast of free jazz post-bop players. Um, Charles Owens, Jerry Rush, um, Sunship Theus, uh, pianist Dwight Dickerson. Those are the main ones that we heard. And Henry Flank Franklin um, anchoring it well, even if on this track that we heard he was kind of guiding things along and, and more felt than heard. As um, piano, um, trumpet, flugelhorn, sax, and drums and percussion really just took center stage and formed that whole tornado of sound that, that was just spinning nonstop throughout nearly six minutes. Just um, an amazing sonic assault. Um, for more great uh, jazz funk albums, Rubies and Sapphires, see the... Well, this wasn't quite jazz funk, although this, is, this was pure like, like, like free jazz. Um, although I, I, you know, I don't even know if I have this album included because it didn't quite, I've got a couple of, of Henry Franklin titles on there though. Like one included like an electric piano and so kind of just made it in. Um, I was going to do like another directory at some point, um, for spiritual jazz, free jazz, stuff that, that, that stayed acoustic and thus didn't really cross over into jazz funk, electric jazz, um, knowing that some people are a bit more um, oh strict on on those definitions than than, than I might be the, the the acoustic electric the acoustic versus electrified fence um, anyway um, so yeah see the links in the description and until next time yeah like and subscribe for more videos like this. And this is Zaragon, here the world's most ear-traveled trimaximalist, signing off.